Alright everyone, welcome back again for some more of the Great Ace Attorney 2. It looks like this is it guys. This is the final part of part 2. And with that guys, I gotta tell you, it's been fun. I, it has been a journey if anything. Like we played through part 1, making it all the way to part 2. And I enjoyed the story of Ryosuke Narahodo along with his judicial assistant, Susato. I really did, and I liked the main cast. I like the main cast. Sorry, I enjoyed the main cast and everyone else and how they evolved over time. But anyways, I'll cut this intro short because I'll have more to say at the end anyway. So if anything else, I hope you all enjoy. Thank you all for watching. Let's get to it. 4th of November, 4:21 p.m. The Old Bailey Defendant's Anna Chamber. It really is all over. But did I sacrifice too much? Mr. Narahodo! I really must congratulate you. It was a truly, truly splendid performance. Honestly, I couldn't be happier for you. Oh, thank you very much. But I really couldn't have done it without you at my side through it all, Mr. Sato. Oh! Your kind words mean so much to me. It really was a very splendid show, that, Narahodo. I not thought you'd be smiling from ear to ear, but you look rather glum. Well, of course I'm delighted about the verdict, but in exposing the truth I'm afraid I've caused my client a great deal of pain. I'm really not sure that's what a lawyer's ought to be doing. Oh well, in that case, I'm quite sure that when you see Lord Van Dyke's smiling face, everything will seem much better. <laughs> ah. Um, Mr. Sato, everything seems worse. He has a face like thunder. Oh dear, I really shouldn't have presumed. Mr. Narahodo. Uh, um, yes? Almost a year it's been now since I first encountered you here in this very courthouse. For you to have risen to the level of excellence you demonstrated today. Well, it's quite remarkable. But, but I... I exposed the most unpalatable truth you could ever have imagined in court today. I feel as so I've robbed you of something you held so dear. What was it he said? To fight those who dwell in the darkness requires at least some of us to occupy the darkness ourselves? But that, that was just the feeble excuse of a coward. Only those with a steadfast eye for the truth have what it takes to fight the dark forces of crime. You made fine work of establishing the fact in court today. Oh. Well, thank you. What a magnanimous words. I'm quite sure that Kazuma-sama would have smiled on his face at this very moment if he were here. Kazuma. Oh god. Um, Mr. Sato. There's another face like thunder here. Oh my. And he really was here. Lord Van Zeeks. Allow me to congratulate you on your acquittal. Congratulate me, or curse me. You failed to bring down the Reaper. I owe you an apology. No, it is I who should apologize. Your father, Genshin. If I had been stronger, then perhaps. I made an unforgivable error of judgment. I can offer no excuse. And I can offer no forgiveness. That said, I suppose you fought for justice and the truth. For that, at least, I can't withhold respect. Your words mean more to me than you can know. I will hold them dear. Kazuma-sama. I must say, there's one thing that's still bothering me. What's that? The will that, that Lord Plim Van Zeeks wrote before his duel with my father. Asagi is a fine detective and a hunter worthy of respect. He has agreed to honor my final two wishes. The first is that this document survives. The second, I cannot commit to paper. I have confessed my sins to my wife. May she find resolution in my death. With my eternal gratitude to my Japanese friends, I, wish I rest my quill. Clint Van Zeeks. What can the second of his final wishes have been? That your father agreed to honor you mean? Hmm. I think perhaps. 
I might be able to shed some light on that. What? Father! It was ten years ago, as you know. The day before. Before the execution was, was scheduled. I went to the prison to say my farewells to Genshin. Why aren't you putting up more of a fight, Genshin? If you'd only agree to it, Sashiro and I would gladly petition the government. We've been through this already. You don't need to worry about me. Anyway, Yujin. I have a favor to ask of you. Something of great importance. You're one of my greatest friends, Genshin. Whatever it is, consider it done. I'm going to tell you an address. I need you to go there at once, in secret and telling no one. You should find a lady of the gentry in hiding there. A lady of the gentry? She's not in a good way, and she's with child. The birth is imminent. As a medical man, I'd like you to attend to her. Please, you're her only hope. By any chance, is the child yours, Genshin? Don't be daft. It's a favor that was asked of me by a man I knew, as his dying wish. My goodness. I swore to the man that I would help. That I would do whatever I could for his wife and his unborn child. But if something should happen to me, I need to ask you that same favor. You're the only person I know that I can truly rely on. What did you say? If something should happen to you, tomorrow night you're going to be... to be... <laughs> you never know though, do you? What life will bring. Alright then, tell me the address. I'll head there at once. No, not with him. Pardon? This is a favor I'm asking of you, and only you, Eugene. Right, I see. Very well then. That very night, I caught a train from Paddington to Dartmoor in Devon. In Devon. I found the old house in the middle of nowhere it was. An old haunting la hound lay asleep in the grounds. The poor woman was on the floor, at the back of a darkened room. She was in mortal danger. I broke her watch to precipitate the labor before she weakened further, but it was a torturous birth. I did everything humanely possible for her and her child. And in the end, I was lucky enough to welcome a new life into the world. But tragically... My efforts to save the mother's life were in vain. I held the healthy newborn girl in my arms and wept for longer than I care to remember. Eventually, in something of a daze, I looked around the room. There was a precious little there was precious little in it, but an old travel trunk caught my eye. It had clearly been well looked after over the years, made of top quality leather with fine stitching. But it was when I saw the emblem on the side of that that everything dropped into place. B for Baskerville. Baskerville? You mean the woman was the wife of Lord Clint Van Zeeks? That's right. That newborn was his daughter. But... But that makes no sense! Why on earth would Clint have entrusted the child to my care in that case? I was completely unaware that he even had a daughter. I suppose he didn't really have any cho choice. What? Well, your brother said that he'd confess everything to his wife. So she must have been beside herself with worry for her child. If the true identity of the professor were ever to be made public, the girl would be forever branded as the daughter of the infamous mass murderer. Ah! So the only solution was, this, was to distance the young girl from the Benedict's family as much as possible. I don't believe it. I imagine that in his final hour, Lord Clint Van Zeeks made the obvious choice. He would have thought to himself, this Japanese man here is someone I can trust. I honored my promise, Genshin. I honored my promise to Genshin, of course. However, only a month later, I was summoned back to Japan. 
And without disclosing the parentage of the child, I couldn't obtain permission to take her with me. Oh, how awful! I was completely at a loss. In the end, I had to ask my great friend. I asked him if he would be a father to her. That being Mr. Sholmes, I presume. Yes. He took one look into my eyes and, and agreed to it on the spot. Mr. Sholmes? He has a heart of gold. Really, all it can be said that I did for the child was to give her a name. Oh. When I come to Britain, I was trying to escape from the grief of losing my darling wife. So it was her name that I gave the little girl. Your wife's name? Professor Mikotoba. In other words... The name of my mother. I am a Mikotoba. Oh! That's right. I am a... Or in English... Iris. Iris. I... I had no idea. Ouch! M Mr. Narahoro, what's wrong? This little thing just pinched me on the behind through my trouser pocket hard. Ah, my dear fellows, can you hear me? Mr. Sholmes, is that you? Ouch! Yes, yes, we can hear you. You see what excessive tugging can do? Let that be a lesson to you. Mr. Sholmes, we weren't able to thank you properly before, but you were simply marvelous. Your checkmate move was a stroke of genius. Indeed it was, wasn't it? I surpassed myself, I feel. It had become apparent to me that to stop the Lord Chief Injustice would require such measures. Bruno, Susie! Oh, Iris. Oh, I'm so pleased. What a wonderful outcome. Her Majesty Queen Vicky said she thought my special blend was delicious. Oh, um, I'm sure she did. After all, no one brews a more delicious tea than you do, Iris. Let's have a party to celebrate. And Mr. Reaper, you simply must come too. What? Um, I'm... I'm afraid I couldn't. The Reaper of the Bailey flustered by a ten-year-old girl again. No, really? Oh, poo. But, I give you my word that I shall present myself at your residence in the near future to express my gratitude. Oh, how lovely. You promise now, I won't let you forget. Bye for now then. All right, Iris, thank you for all your help earlier. Oh, that was nothing, just come back home soon. Ah! Oh! Ah, oh, one final pinch of goodbye, was it? Well, I think I ought to be leaving. Lord Van Zeeks, would you care to accompany me? Certainly. Mr. Naraholdo, allow me once again to express my deep gratitude to you. I believe you saved my life. Wait, Lord Van Zeeks! Yes? Uh... What are you intending to do now? Well, clearly, I shall have to resign from the prosecutor's office. Oh no! I intend to publicize the full truth about the professor case. Once that's done, the Van Zeeks family will be ostracized completely from London society. Surely not. So, as soon as I'm free from my employment, I shall leave the capital. Oh. I see. Don't be a fool. Are those the actions of a man once feared as the mighty reaper of the Bailey? I beg your pardon. For the past 10 years, you've endured that pseudonym and been cast as one of the dark forces yourself. Now that you've finally been freed from that disrepute, your battle is just beginning, surely. Well, I certainly never expected to hear those words from your lips. I waited a very long time to come to London. Now I'm properly here, I intend to learn all that I can. Anyway, goodbye for now. Yonosuke Narahodo. Kazuma Asagi. It seems as though he's really matured suddenly. 
He's not the only one who's matured, Mr. Narahodo. Hmm? Well, I think we should make our way back to Baker Street. We must have Iris for tonight's dinner. We must. It was then that I came to an important decision about my future. to November, 6.25 p.m. Shom's is sweet. I'm home. Ah! About time you got here. We've been waiting ages, Otto. What are you doing with that? Colorful piece of history. It's a party, isn't it? It's gotta go off with a bang. I mean fireworks, ideally. But when you ain't got fire, smoke's the next best thing, ain't it? There's a girl in Fresno Street who could help you with that, I think. Right. I remember that. You don't have to reload that thing every time I speak. You really must hear this, it's quite the most extraordinary thing. I assure you, it would defy your expectations. Take down every detail now, Mikotoba. Ah, the world famous great detective regaling his, regaling his partner with the tale of his adventure. A sight to behold. Would you care to hazard a guess? Where do you suppose the fiendish runaway had concealed himself? Would you believe inside the trunk I found abandoned in his cabin? I would believe it, yes. I say, Mikotoba, I detect not a hint of surprise. I wonder why that is, hmm? Maybe because I was there at the scene as well, Sholmes? What? You were? Then why the deuce didn't you say so before? Not quite the sight I was expecting to behold, but still. It's hard not to feel privileged to see it. Hello, Mr. Sholmes, Professor Mikotoba. I'm finally back from the Bailey. Not a moment too soon. A feast prepared by Iris and Mr. Sato awaits. I must say, I haven't seen Sato looking so happy in a very long time. Ah, Runo! There you are! Dinner's on the table, everyone. Please do come and take a seat. Time to fill me boots. Goodness, is that really true, Gina? Yep, I'm losing my copper's globber and going back to what I know best. It's a diver's life for me. You're really leaving the police force? But why, Ginny? Well, the boss ain't around no more, so... Oh. And anyway, no matter how I hard try, that Reaper ain't never gonna accept the diver turned, the, turned dick, is he? Well, people can change, you know. Ah, yes, that reminds me. I rather thoughtfully offered to relieve the bailiff of this now defunct piece of evidence. Huh? It's. It's the inspector's pocket watch! And the crown has been reattached! That watch was his pride and joy, a symbol of his great achievements at Scotland Yard. For ten years without fail, it measured every second of the man's remarkable career. Now, it stopped. Someone needs to keep the memory of Inspector Gregson's career alive by taking on the great responsibility of winding that watch every single day again. Yes, someone with an equally fierce detective spirit. It's gotta be me. There ain't no one else. Quite right. I mean, after all, the boss was... Well, he was my boss. Yes, Ginny, yes he was. Oh yeah, and I made you a promise in all day, I, Iris. That I'd become a proper detective one day and track down your old man. Oh. Alright then, it's decided, I'll do it, and I swear. I'll find your dad and bring him in kicking and screaming. I'm... Not entirely sure that would be appropriate. Yes, I think Gina, it might be best. I think I'd like you to forget that promise, Gina. Huh? Iris? Well, obviously I've always wondered about who my real daddy is. Of course I have. I wanted to know where I've come from. I thought it might tell me something about myself. But I've caused such a lot of trouble trying to find out for so many people. 
Curly, Runo, Professor Mickey. Oh no, not at all, my dear. Really, you owe no apology to anyone. Well anyway, I've decided to give up on it, because I finally realized my daddy is the greatest in the world. I don't think it matters what his name is or where he's from. Don't you agree? Hurley? With every word, Iris. Thank you, Hurley. Thank you, Daddy. I think, Mikotoba. Yes, Shomes? I think that I ought to express my gratitude to you. Oh. For six years, you and I solved many a mystery together. And during that time, I remember countless expressions of gratitude for our good services. But a moment ago, I heard the most pleasing expression of gratitude of them all. And I should never have experienced it were it not for you. You old softy shones. But I must confess, it's a weight off my mind to hear you say it. Well then, I think this calls for a lengthy violin recital, wouldn't you say? Oh well, the food would cook the, f <laughs> the food would go cold, that's the only problem. Maybe next week, Curly? Are you sure a week is long enough, Iris? <laughs> Even amidst the most troubling of cases, even reeling from the most shocking revelations, returning in the evening to this sweet rooms, there's always warmth and happiness to be had. The home of the world's greatest detective, and my home too, and my greatest family. Fourth November, 9.37pm, Larajodos Legal Consultancy. This attic room has been my home and office for almost a year now. I've certainly had some unforgettable experiences whilst I lived here. But I think now, the time has come. Time to bid this place farewell. Narohodo. Oh, Professor! Are you alone? I didn't hear any sound from Susato's room. Yes, Susato's son went out after dinner. She took a carriage. Something about an important marriage she needed to take care of. Ah, I see. I wanted to thank you for what you did earlier. Oh? With Iris, I mean. When the subject of her father came up. Lord Clint Van Zeeks. I made up my mind many years ago never to tell her who her real father was. It's what was agreed with Genshin, after all. Lord Clint Van Zeeks' final wishes before he died, you mean? Yes. I've had to take some rather drastic steps at times to protect that secret, you know? Calling Susato back to Japan six months ago, for example. That's why. When I read Sasaki-san's report about his final days in London, my heart nearly stopped. You'd stumble across the crooks of the terrible case, the dog's collar. The description of the Baskerville insignia left me in no doubt. Baskerville. If you decide to investigate that insignia, sooner or later you'd have made the connection to the Van Zeeks. And to make matters worse, Susato knew of the unpublished story as well. The story that Iris had written based on my notes from the time. Ah yes, the Hound of the Baskervilles. Exactly. It was a work of fiction, but based on the grim reality of the huge beast of a dog being used as a murder weapon. A dog with the Baskerville family emblem around its neck. Armed with those two clues, I feared you and Susato might arrive at the truth. So I invented that story about having collapsed to justify her leaving London and returning to Japan at once. All in aid of halting any investigations you and she might have been con contemplating. I see. Something I never understood is why Susato-san came across that manuscript in Japan though. You know, Iris is the Hound of the Baskerville story, I mean. Shom sent it to me. That was before Susato left Japan. He was very troubled about what it should be done about it, you see. I read it and carelessly left it on my desk, which is where Susato came across it, of course. Ah. It was the only case Shomes and I ever pursued that I didn't record in meticulous detail. I was stunned when I discovered that young Iris had placed it to pieced it together so much of it from my paltry notes. Shomes and I discussed the matter and decided that we couldn't allow the story's publication. At that point, I returned the manuscript by post to Shomes for safekeeping. 
So you did all that to stop Iris from finding out the truth about her father. That's right, because Sholmes had told me how astute she'd become. However, having witnessed events in court today, I must say my opinion has somewhat shifted. Oh? I think at some point in the future, the time will come for Iris to know the truth. And when it does, well, I believe it will be for the best. I think so too. Actually, Professor, I wanted to talk to you about something too. Judging from that expression, I'd say you've come to a decision, have you? Yes, I have. I will be returning with you to J returning with you to Japan. Wow, <laughs> that's all. That's a lot of mistakes there. Are you quite sure? I'm really only here as a substitute for Kazuma, but he's here in Britain now, as originally intended. Locum student Nadaholdo doesn't really have a right to stay. I think. I see. Looking back now, when I first arrived here in February. My becoming a lawyer just seemed to be the way things turned out. With Kazuma, Susato-san, and Mr. Shomes all gently pushing me in that direction. I spent the best part of a year immersed in this world, but always aware of a seed of doubt inside me. Until today. Standing in that courtroom earlier, all doubts vanished from my mind. I was totally focused. I was sure of my belief in my client, and I was sure I could see the trial through. And at the end of it, I finally realized... No one else chose this path for me. I chose it myself. path of a defense lawyer, huh? Yes, that's what I am now. That's what I'll be going back with you to Japan as. And that's the path I'll be following for the rest of my life. Well, it sounds like you made quite a resolution there. I have. Very well then. I must say, it's extremely welcome news. I shall make arrangements for your return first thing tomorrow, but I don't imagine we'll depart for a few days. Not with the symposium having been cancelled now. Such a shame. Never mind, I'm sure there will be other opportunities in the future. Well then, I'll bid you good night. Susato-san! I just wanted to let you know I'm back. Did you, um hear what your father and I were discussing? I'm so sorry, I did, yes. I couldn't help but... Oh, how much did you hear? Well... From the part about Iris' real father, I think. In other words, from the beginning. So you've made up your mind. You'll return to Japan and continue working as a defense lawyer. Ah, uh, yes. I'm... I'm sorry, I really, should have, I really should have consulted you about it. I did want to earlier this evening, actually, but you'd already gone out. Oh no, that's quite alright. I already knew that it's what you decide, Naruhodo-san. You did? Um, Chisato-san. Ah! Y yes? I suppose this means it... Has to be farewell soon. I suppose. You'll be a great help to Kazuma going forward. I mean, I know he's a brilliant lawyer, but he's new to the British courtroom. He'll certainly benefit greatly having a brilliant judicial assistant at his side. I'll do my very best. I wish I could say it, but I just can't. I can't ask her to come with me after all. She was always supposed to be coming to Britain as Kazuma's assistant. It's growing late. 
We should both try and get some sleep. I'm sure you must be exhausted after today. Oh, yes, you're right. Before I retire, let me just say one more time. You really were quite splendid in court today. So if you ask me, anyone who thinks of you as a substitute or a locum, you should, or a locum should be ashamed of themselves. Susato-san. Thank you. Seventh of November, five forty two AM, Port of Dover, Quayside. I can't believe this day's finally come. You're really leaving then, Runo? I'm afraid so, Iris. Hold on. Hold on. I skipped that. Thank you so much for everything. I don't know what I'll do without your wonderful cooking and delicious tea. Oh, I wish you weren't going. But but you have to come back and visit. Say you will. Of course. I promise. Well, it was a very brief reunion, but it was a pleasure to pursue a case with you again after so long. For a while, at least, it felt like old times. Yes, I suppose on reflection, there's something to be said for it, having a little fun once in a while. I'll just go and say goodbye to the professor as well, I think. Alright, Iris, you do that. Susato-san. I've just checked, Narahodo-san. Your luggage is already on board. Such a beautiful morning. Perfect for embarking on a journey, isn't it? Before I set off, I'd just like to say how thankful I am for everything you've done for me. And give my warmest regards to Kazuma, please. Actually, I think you ought to give him your regards in person, don't you? Sorry? Ryonosuke. Kazuma! What, what are you doing here? <laughs> Do you really think I'd miss my best friend's departure? <laughs> Thanks. To be honest, I'd been looking forward to our wild time tearing up the streets of Her Majesty's capital, but, uh... Hmm. Well, we'll have to save that for another time. Personally, I'm looking forward to facing you in court again. Me too. But, uh, we're both defense lawyers, so, uh... I'm going to become a prosecutor. I'll stay in Lord Van Zeek's tutelage for the time being, but before long... I intend to be just as formidable as the Reaper himself. Oh, I see. Actually, Ryunosuke, I have a favor to ask. Name it. I'd like you to take care of this for me for a while. Karuma? Why? Because I've seen it now. I've seen what's inside me, the demon that reared its ugly head that day. It was only for the briefest of moments, the last time I came face to face with that inspector. But it was unmistakable. I wanted to kill him. I've always known there are demons that live inside people. And now I know there is one in me. The fact that it very nearly consumed me is something I'll carry with me until the end of my days. While I devote my life to fighting those whose demons have got the better of them. As a prosecutor. So that's what you've resolved to do, is it? Until I'm ready to face the demon within me, to slay it once and for all. I leave this in your care, if you'll take it. 
Of course I will. I'll keep it by my side. Always. Until we meet again, then. You have your path to follow, and I have mine. Um... Naruhodo-san? The path you're going to follow from now on... I wonder if I might follow it at your side, and unless I'd be a burden. What? I, I mean, I... I w would very much like you to come with me. But... but aren't you...? <laughs> You're so predictable, Rinosuke. I am? Honestly, you never change at all. But that's what I like about you. You... you mean you knew about this? It was the evening after Lord Van Zeek's trial came to an end. She came to see me at the prosecutor's office. Really? Or when I had that conversation with Professor Mikotoba? So, you'd go with Rinosuke back to Japan? Yes. I know it's unfair of me to follow my own interests like this. Coming here especially to tell me. <laughs> You're a stickler for etiquette, aren't you? Well, what are his feelings? We've never discussed it, of course, and Narhodosan has made no such suggestion. I worry that perhaps I'd be a burden to him. He's just as much of a stickler for etiquette as you are. He'd never say anything before he was asked. But I'd feel happy knowing you were with him. Look out for him on my behalf, will you? Of course. Sato san what, what do you think, Narahodo san With you by my side, no trial would seem too daunting. So if you're willing, I'd be honored if you'd come with me. Together we can take on the world. I'm terribly incompetent, but if you'll have me, I'd be delighted. Oh, oh, no, no, not at all. I, if anyone's terribly incompetent, it's me. Ah! What's wrong? Your luggage, Susato-san. There's no time. The ship's going to set sail any minute now. Uh, it's all right. There's no need to worry. As it happens, my luggage is already on board, too. It is? <laughs> Your fine judicial assistant has everything in hand as always, I see. Bruno! Your ship's about to leave! Time to go then. Look after yourself, Runosuke. Cosma, draw your sword. One day, when our paths cross, once more, we'll fight a duel, a duel of words, across the courtroom. A day I eagerly await, as a lawyer. I've been waiting to hear you say that, partner. Don't forget me then, Kazuma. As if I could, Ryanosuke. And Mr. Sholmes, thank you so much. I'm very much indebted to you. Indeed, Mr. Narahodo. I believe you are. I'll never forget all you've done for me during my time in London. Quite. I should like to think you will remember your debt of gratitude. Especially when I visit you in your country. What? The truth is, although many are ignorant of the fact, 
The world is far smaller than most folk realize. Well, I'd be delighted if you came to Japan one day. Oh, yes! Would welcome you with open arms, Mr. Sholmes. Oh, that sounds wonderful! I can't wait! In that case, let us conclude that this is to be merely a brief parting, my dear fellows. And that brings us to the end of my adventures in Great Britain. A peculiar twist of fate brought me halfway around the world those many months ago. But that was just the start of my journey. Who knows where fate will lead me next? Still, I'm confident this won't be my last meeting with the friends I've made in London. And when we're together again. No doubt the first words I'll hear will be... Come, the game is afoot! The ship, with our friends from the east, sailed steadily towards the distant horizon. But shows his face was alight with joy. The times may change, but a steadfast friendship will remain true, Wilson. We have but to we gently close, close our, our eyes, eyes, and we, we are, are with, with our, our companions, companions once, once more. more. So, so I, I do, do just, just that. that. And when I do, I can hear his strong, familiar voice ring out. Objection! Until we meet again, Bruno! And that's it guys, we finally beat the Great Ace Attorney 2. Wow! Okay, no, I thought it was uh I thought it was something to me. I decided to ask for one minute and hour. Alright, well. Let me get on to say that, guys, just like part one, this game has been amazing. I haven't, you know, I have been this hooked to a story in a while. There are a couple of games that got me, but this one, and it's also my first, um, what do you call, one of my first Ace Attorney games yet. It's the prequel, and there are others that are, you know, just as good, but it's my first one, and I enjoyed it. Or at least the first one in a set. Part one and two, that is. And again, beautiful game beautiful voice acting though here and there not really a complete <laughs> not really complete but when I do listen it's great when it's around perfect otherwise again I love everything about this game I love the clues I love the whole uh, I like how it doesn't take itself seriously at times and how incredibly dramatic it tends to be a lot at times <laughs> I think without its dramatics I think it, it wouldn't be the game that we're playing now. It wouldn't be Ace Attorney. So, <laughs> I'm glad that uh, the game came out to be the way it is. And I especially love the characters. I love how they evolved from part one to part two, and the twists and turns we had to go through in order to see every plot point through. And, like, the, I loved how the characters evolved. I like what became of um, Van Zeeks over here, Sholmes. <laughs> Even Gina. There was so much going on, and I especially liked um, Kazuma's character development. Like, I never... We all knew he was alive. You know, I never thought for a second he was dead. I honestly thought, though, that uh, the Inspector would be alive. And it turns out he really was killed, and that really sucked. And I always knew, deep down, that Strongheart... There was something about that character. He was too... Not that he was menacing, but he had the look of a character that was supposed to be what you call someone you ended up encountering in the final act of this game 
and lo and behold, he really was. He was the villain, and it didn't help that he's been kind of giving off hints here and there that weren't really, for lack of a better word, honest. <laughs> But otherwise, again, I like I liked how it all concluded. I like what it led up to. I feel bad for Van Zeeks though. I feel bad for the brother. Like that was a, that was a, a, a twist I wasn't expecting. But even then, it was executed really well. And I think that's what these games have going for them. They know how to execute their ideas properly, and it's really great. But yeah. So if anything else, guys, I think I'm gonna end it here and tell you all to those that haven't played it, try it out. It's really great. And yeah, I may try some future uh, Ace Attorney games down the line. I don't know yet. I hope there's like a part three of this one though. I really like to continue the story of uh, of Naruhodo and Sisato, but who knows, right? If anything else, guys, thank you again for watching. Until the next one. <laughs>